To clear my head of thoughts of slaughtered whales, I hitch a lift with a man whose passion for music and photography have come together on Harris. The music on the radio is a clue to the man behind the wheel. John Mayer from the 70s punk rock band The Buzzcocks. I left school at 16 and I, I, that basically was my first job and also probably a, a large part of my education of, in many ways. I was a drummer. Yeah, I'd been playing drums for five weeks when I joined the band. So you weren't exactly an expert drummer when you joined then? No, no, but that, that was uh, the punk rock ethic. <laughs> After the band split, I thought, well, I'll just carry on and I'll maybe get a job drumming with somebody else. No. Oh, and it became apparent that really, if you wanted to pursue that as a full-time career, it would almost definitely involve having to move down to London. And that wasn't something that I was prepared to do. Instead of London, John moved to Harris 13 years ago. Here, he's found a new creative outlet taking some extraordinary photographs that capture a different face of the island. It took me about uh, seven years to get to the stage where I'd figured out a way of photographing the place in a way that actually interested me. Rather than uh, just taking a picture of a landscape, yeah. there's a subject in the picture and it always will be something that's related to something that people have done, with lights whether it might be a house or it might be the old tractor. It's something that shows that people live or yeah. did live here uh -huh. and did things here in this landscape. That's the bit. Like that these buildings we're passing. Yeah, exactly. They've got a story to tell, haven't they? Yes. Yeah. yeah. There are many ruined and deserted homes on Harris. These are a special source of inspiration for John. Using long exposure times, and frequently shooting at night, John has created a unique set of haunting images that reveal the remorseless passage of time. Well, I'm in focus. I don't know about you. Uh, it takes a little longer <laughs> with this setup. I, th I think this was pretty much the one of the first houses that I actually ventured inside. I, for, I don't know why, but I just thought I was, I was curious. And just from a, uh, you know, a photographic point of view, it's just uh, s such a great image. So it's not something you can artificially create. It just takes time to make things look like this. And, and it's I, beautiful as well. Yeah, I think so. But there's something really poignant about being here as well, because this was somebody's home. You can almost sense the life. There's all these effects lying around. There's a kettle on the hob there, and there's a little brush for clearing up all the coal dust. And there's even a purse over there. So you're kind of reminded of someone's life, and yet it's gone, but somehow yeah. still almost, almost touchable. So often in, in some of the, the houses like this that I've been into, it's like nothing has been taken by anybody. It, uh, it has just been left. And I'd, I don't think it's like um, uh, some kind of bizarre memorial to those people. You must leave it as it is. I think, it, I don't know, it just, just seems to be a common, common thing. Not a lot of places in the UK where a house would be allowed to just gradually I don't know, go, I guess it's returning back to nature, really, pretty Remorseless much. Remorseless time, marching it is. on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We all feel it, John. <laughs> yeah. Before we're overtaken by time's winged chariot, I leave John...